What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I repot my Rapis Excelsa. Now the common names that you've probably heard it called uh, is the broadleaf lady palm or the lady palm or the bamboo palm and both of those names are rather unfortunate because it's not a lady and it's not a bamboo plant but seriously though uh, they call it the lady palm because all rapis palms have deeply divided palmate leaves and from far enough away they kind of give the impression of kind of severed deeply divided kind of i don't want to say severed but slender fingers they almost look kind of reminiscent of like a lady's hand. Um, so that's where the lady palm kind of comes into play. And then the bamboo palm, like I said, is really rather unfortunate because there are a number of other kind of palms that are given the name or the common name of a bamboo-like plant. So this kind of adds to the further confusion with uh, inexperienced growers or collectors. Uh, so that is why they kind of call them either the lady palm or the bamboo palm. Uh, but those are, alas, the common names, and that's why I usually typically only go by the scientific name to eliminate any other kind of confusion out there. Now, as I was saying, they do call it the bamboo palm, uh, and that is because the segments kind of look like uh, bamboo, uh, and they are a little bit invasive uh, if planted outside, but fortunately they are rather slow growing palms, uh, so this gives you uh, enough time to actually kind of correct that. Uh, but the roots are more like rhizomes, and they kind of send out uh, little runners in all different kind of directions for several different feet. Uh, and they will kind of get grow underneath concrete. And if it's thin enough concrete, it can kind of like tear it up and kind of mess with stuff. Uh, but like I said, it's rather slow growing. So you do have a lot of time to kind of get in there and correct any kind of uh, egregious growing that you didn't really want to happen. But uh, they are kind of clumping just like bamboo usually does. These guys, uh, I've seen a lot of videos on them and I've seen a lot of pictures and I've always wanted one, but this is one plant that has eluded me and that I've never really had. Uh, but I've had this guy for close to about six months now, give or take a month. Uh, and I wanted to go ahead and repot him. Like I said, they are rather slow growing plants, so they don't need to be repotted often, uh, but they do take a long time to grow. Uh, that's why typically they are kind of expensive plants. Uh, for anybody that uh, wants to go out and buy one, you will see that they are rather costly. And that's just because it takes them a long time to grow. And for a plant of this size, they've probably been growing in a nursery for several years. So uh, they are a little bit more expensive than your other house plants, but they are worth it. And let me tell you why. These plants do give that kind of tropical feel. And let me tell you, these plants do not exist in nature in the wild. Uh, they are cultivated plants and we do not find them in the wild anymore. Uh, so you will not find them kind of growing freely, but uh, they were cultivated in China, kind of like in the southern areas of China. They've been cultivated as house plants in Japan for close to about 400 years now, uh, since the mid 1600s, somewhere around there. Uh, but it's for good reasons why they've been cultivated for so long. Typically, they look really cool. Like I said, they are slow growing, uh, but they do kind of give that tropical kind of feel to it, and they just look amazing. They are kind of the fan palms, uh, and any kind of Chinese or Japanese kind of garden, you would expect to see these guys, and their color is just amazing. They're kind of a lime green color, uh, and they look really cool, and they're kind of known for their leaves and their foliage. Uh, but another reason why they are so popular is because they uh, work for you. Now, uh, they do purify the air. A lot of plants will just produce oxygen, but these guys will actually purify the air from ammonia, formaldehyde, xylene, and carbon dioxide. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't know too much about that. Uh, formaldehyde is typically found uh, in paints, in carpet, in cigarette smoke, cooking kind of gives off some formaldehyde uh furniture does too 
So uh, these guys can actually purify that and get rid of that. Formaldehyde is a carcinogen, so it can cause cancer, or it is believed to cause cancer if it's, if it's been exposed uh, to you for quite some time. Uh, this plant will actually kind of filter that out and help with that. Um, ammonia, if you have any kind of organic material in your house that needs to break down organically, uh, typically human or animal waste, so if you have dogs or cats with litter boxes, this will come in handy and actually kind of filter that out so it doesn't stink all the time and actually clean the air. Uh, but, you know, the other things that break down like fungus and then pharmaceutical products can also do uh, some uh, ammonia and uh, rubbers can do can produce some ammonia as well but like I said these plants can actually break that down and filter that out and make your air a little bit healthier for you to breathe too now aside from that another reason why these plants are very popular is because they can tolerate a wide range of conditions uh, just as long as they get a little bit of light average water average humidity you can pretty much set them and forget them uh, these plants do really well in low light conditions. I should say they tolerate low light conditions extremely well. So if you have a kind of dark area where other plants do not fare so well, try a rapis palm because they can put up with low light conditions relatively well. Now I'm not saying you should kind of set them there and forget about them. Uh, you do want to give them some light but not too much. Their leaves will be damaged by bright direct sunlight. So uh, I have mine in a north facing window and I kind of supplement with some LEDs that will help him a little bit and he's been fine uh, for this five or six months that I've had him. And uh, like I said, a lot of people say that they do really well in kind of like darker hallways or stairwells, but I know a lot of you have seen them in like college buildings, uh, any other kind of buildings and then houses, restaurants. These plants are very popular because they can tolerate different conditions relatively well. And as I was saying, this plant is, uh, has a remarkable adaptability. They can survive frost, they can survive droughts, they can survive high winds, and they can even take some direct hot sunlight. Now I should say that for established plants, um, younger plants like this would probably burn and fall out and die but uh, they can survive a wide range of conditions as long as few of their needs are being met. If they are receiving kind of bright indirect light, uh, average water, uh, they can succumb to root rot rather quickly, but they are really resilient when it comes to different kinds of diseases. The only diseases that I know that really kind of ail a rapist palm would be root rot, or uh, leaf spot disease that you can see in some of the leaves. But other than that, they're pretty resilient. Uh, when it comes to pests, they just have their average ailments with pests, including mites, mealybugs, and scale. Now with mites and mealybugs, you can kind of wipe the tops and bottoms of the leaves and the stems with a uh, washcloth or a Q-tip dabbed in some isopropyl alcohol, and that'll kill that. Uh, scale is a little bit harder to treat, so you would need like a systemic insecticide, and I will put a link to what I use uh, off Amazon uh, if you have a problem with scale. Now what I mean by systemic is you kind of add that into the soil and then water it and the plant will absorb that insecticide and then as the bugs eat on the plant, it will kill the bug and it's very effective with scale. Now that I've given you a little bit of background, a little bit of history on the plant, I wanted to go ahead and show you uh, how to repot this plant. And as I said, this is a kind of suckering species and they will send out shoots or runners. So uh, it is great to actually keep these in containers because that will actually keep that in, in check and won't let it kind of run free reign all over the yard. Uh, but they do like to be a little bit root bound, but you got to be careful because they do send out those runners and shoots. And if you leave them in there for an excessively long time, it will become so root bound or pot bound uh, that it can choke itself out and probably kill itself. Now, like I said, it is very slow growing, so that will take quite some time. Uh, and some of their dwarf cultivars uh, can actually go decades 
without actually noticing how pot bound they are. But just don't forget about it. Like I said, uh, after a couple of years, you do want to kind of check up on it and make sure that it's not looking too bound. Uh, and by bound, I just mean roots coming off the top or at the bottom of the pot, or if you kind of squeeze on it, there's no give to the pot and it feels like it's about to break. And if it's in like a uh, terracotta pot, it can break the pot. So just don't forget about that. And as I said so before, they are really adaptable to most different types of soil, just as long as they are acidic. As long as it's well drained and it's a little acidic, your plant should be okay in kind of clay or loamy or sandy soils. Uh, but upon further research, I've noticed that they do like something kind of light and airy, something that's more marketable towards African violets kind of helps them out. So I've made my own concoction of about three parts miracle Grow cactus and palm citrus soil, two parts of the miracle Grow African violets, and I put in about one part of cocoa core to help with the acidity and one part perlite uh, because the cacti and palm and citrus already has some uh, perlite in there. So I went ahead and mixed in a little bit more just to kind of help with the drainage. So I've added that in there mixed it up a little bit and now I'm just going to go ahead and create a little divot for the root mass to kind of sit in and next I will kind of squeeze the pot that it's currently in and I will go ahead and grab the top ever so carefully you don't want to pull it out and do a bunch of damage to the stems and you will make a little bit of a mess but that's what gardening is about now I'm not going to remove too much of the root mass just because this plant is slow growing and I want the plant to actually focus more on development above the soil, not below it. And if I cut too much off below the soil, he's going to try to compensate by uh, mixing in more for the roots and making more roots. Now I went ahead and bought a pot that will let him fill out rather nicely. I would say it's probably gonna take a good three, maybe even four years for him to fill this up because they are rather slow growing. And I want him, like I said, to focus more on uh, top growth development rather than uh, on the bottom. Now these pots are very nice. They sell them at Lowe's for around $10, uh, but they're plastic. So they're not very heavy and they're not very expensive. Uh, you're able to add in the drainage holes that you want with a drill or a uh, screwdriver and a hammer. So I went ahead and added about 12 drainage holes to the bottom because these guys do not like to be standing in water for long periods of time. Uh, a little bit of water won't hurt, but if you add too much in and they can't get rid of it, then it will succumb to root rot rather quickly. And with some more of this Miracle Grow cacti and palm, I will go ahead and add some in to the top. And as I do, I will mix in just a little bit of cocoa core. And if I have any perlite left, I will mix in some of that as well. And then as I do it, I'm going to go ahead and tamp it down and then mix some of this up with my fingers by hand and tap down the soil so that you can anchor him in place and then you're going to rid any air bubbles that uh, might remain around the roots and then wreak havoc on the roots. Alright, now I've got him about where I want him with the soil and I ran out of perlite so I wasn't able to add too much more in towards the top. Uh, but the miracle Grow soil that I'm using already has some in and then the soil that I mixed in with him uh, had a little bit in there too. So I think he'll fare pretty well. Now I just wanted to make sure that the roots and rhizomes are going to be covered up. I don't want to leave too much of that exposed. Uh, a lot of those roots are kind of small and with the smaller thinner roots it won't take too much to actually dry that out and uh, cause that to actually die back. So you do want it to cover up some that way it will protect those roots and as I said I'm going to tamp that down 
to cover that up and I may add some more soil on top though I'm not too sure now the only other thing I have to do would be to water him uh, to make sure that I uh, get him nice and wet and remove any of the air bubbles that may be trapped around the roots that could end up wreaking havoc on them. And as I wanted to say, uh, these guys are extremely sensitive to the chlorine and fluoride that are found in the water. Uh, so I always water mine with distilled water. Uh, and in Kentucky, we have excessively uh, hard water. Uh, so soft water is used, uh, they use a lot of salts to soften that water. So that would cause problems with this guy. And as I said, excessively hard water like we have here in Kentucky uh, will cause a lot of problems too. And the chlorine and fluoride will also cause uh, leaf tip burn uh, and the leaf tips to turn black. So you want to water with pure water, any kind of uh, rain water or distilled water would be beneficial to this plant as well. Now during the growing season, uh, like I said, you want to water when about the top inch of the soil feels dry. Uh, and then in the fall and winter, uh, when he's more dormant, you want to water when about the top two inches or so starts to feel dry. So you definitely want to cut back the watering in the uh, dormant cycle for this plant. And as I said, these are very slow growing house plants. Uh, typically outdoors they typically only grow about 8 to 12 inches uh, annually and then uh, left in containers indoors they grow even slower so uh, that is why they are often really expensive but they are great plants to have just because they'll give that tropical feel and if you're like me and you like indoor trees that get relatively big uh, this plant is one uh, that is known to put on quite some size over extended periods of time. Like I said, uh, there is a guy, uh, but he had one and won the uh, some kind of award back in 1990 uh, for his plant, and it was about 15 feet by about 15 feet wide. It's, it was pretty large and pretty wide is what I'm getting at. So these guys will put on quite some mass, uh, and you'll need a relatively large size uh, once they've been growing for quite some time. Uh, but until then, they can be tabletop plants like I have. So once they get to a certain size, you'll be able to move them to the floor, and they'll be large specimens that can fare relatively well indoors. And as another uh, great aspect of this plant, they are non-toxic. So if you do have any little ones running around, uh, or kittens, or dogs, or birds, uh, these plants are non-toxic. So uh, I wouldn't say go around and let them chew on them, because they can cause some problems but uh, it won't poison anyone or kill anyone so these are safer plants to have so they will purify the air and they're non-toxic and they'll give that lush kind of tropical feel and will get to a considerable size if you're like me and you want a large indoor tree uh, that you can actually fare pretty well indoors like I said, they are relatively code hardy. I believe the USDA zones are around 8, 9, 10, somewhere around there. Uh, but most palms like the tropical field, but some are a little bit code hardy and can be up to about zone 7. Unfortunately, I'm in zone 6, so I can't leave him outdoors in the uh, fall and winter uh, because they typically don't like any conditions that go below 20 degrees Fahrenheit and they can tolerate all up to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So they are great plants to have if uh, you're not so sure if they should thrive indoors or out. Uh, in Kentucky, I leave them outdoors for a little bit of time on the northern side of my house so that he'll get a little bit of direct sunlight but not much at all like i said uh he's relatively new and he's not been established yet so he doesn't fare too well with a lot of direct sunlight like i said these are undergrowth plants out in nature so uh they do like a little bit of shade if not a lot of shade especially during the hotter part of the day. I know a lot of people will actually grow these as privacy screening fences because they actually get so tall and so wide and they don't need a whole bunch of sunlight to actually contend with uh, their growing habits. All right, guys, well, that's really all I wanted to say on this plant. I wanted to go ahead and give a special shout out to my Patreons, uh, my top tier tree Patreon thin. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you as well to the rest of my patrons uh, like David. 
If you have any plant questions and you want to go ahead and get a hold of me, uh, the best way to do this would be on Patreon. Like I always say, I'm often bogged down by comments, messages, emails, and thing of that, things of that nature. So the quickest way to get a hold of me and ask a question would be on Patreon. Well guys, as always, this has been Justin reminding you that if you can, go out and plant a tree. Let's reforest the world. And while you're at it, leave me a comment and let me know if you have any kind of palm. I think this is my favorite, but there are variegated forms out there. So if you have any, let me know and let me know how you fared with those. And then while you're at it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.